Hi there. The purpose of this video is to explain how to change a faulty miniature circuit breaker. There's a distribution board here for the house. 100 amp double pole switch coming in. Electricity is coming in from the meter. The tails are up here. Goes through the switch and then it's split into two RCDs. Five circuit breakers and then this RCD there's another five on it. This circuit breaker here has developed a fault. It tripped out the other day and it can't be put back on. The, it, the electricity won't go on. And in fact, if you push the switch up, you can actually hear it arcing inside. So it's developed a fault where mechanically it's broken and it won't stay on reliably. Inside a miniature circuit breaker, there's two paths. There's a thermal path, a thermal cutout, and there's a magnetic cutout. Thermal one. In the previous section of the video replaced the faulty B16 miniature circuit breaker in the consumer unit, which was connected to one of the radio circuits in the kitchen. So the fault with this particular circuit breaker is it tripped out, it went off, and it wouldn't reset. We can see that somehow the mechanical mechanism inside is broken. It, it doesn't have proper action here. You have to push it right to the top to make contact and you could actually hear there was arcing inside. So it's faulty not to be used and it's now been replaced. So what would be the issue with the circuit breaker? If we turn it round we can actually see here that there's signs of burning, there's signs of overheating. It's actually melted the plastic casing there on that side. If we turn it around to this side, again we can see signs of burning here. That's obviously not good. Any material next to it could be damaged. Worst case scenario, circuit breaker could start fire which is obviously not, not something anybody wants. The addition now, 18th edition of the wiring regulation says that consumer units have to be metal enclosures, not plastic anymore. And that was, for one of the reasons it was, to avoid this type of fault setting fire to the consumer unit, burning the plastic and causing a fire. The next stage to get to the bottom of the fault will be to drill out these rivets here and actually take apart the circuit breaker and we'll look down here to what's actually wrong with the mechanism. So inside the circuit breaker the two main parts of a circuit breaker is there's thermal overload for over currents and there's also a magnetic circuit for short circuit currents so that it trips out extremely quickly. So this is a B16 circuit breaker, so for example it will take 20 amps, it will take an overload current for a period of time, the heat builds up as in, as in thermal overload and eventually if it goes on for a long enough period of time then it will trip out. What I think has been happening with this particular circuit breaker is over a number of years the radial in the kitchen has been overloaded at particular times, uh, possibly when the tumble dryer was on for long periods of time and then the dishwasher was switched on or the kettle was switched on, 3 kilowatts is approximately 12 amps, tumble dryer probably another couple of kilowatts, so you could get up way above the 16 amp breaker rating. It's a 16 amp radio circuit is wired in 2.5 mil twin and earth which is rated upwards of 27 amps so it's not really the, the issue about the cable being damaged necessarily it's the fact that over a long period of time the circuit breaker in terms of the thermal overload has got damaged and it's done the right thing it's actually tripped out but it now will not reset. So this circuit breaker needs to be not used anymore. Ideally the material should be recycled 
and in the next part of the video what we'll do is we'll take it apart and see if any see get to exactly to the bottom of which mechanisms inside were faulty and see if any materials can be recycled it takes a lot longer magnetic one is there to quickly trip out for high overload currents never ever tackle any electrical work unless you are have the experience qualified and competent to do so so on here we've got two 16 amp breakers here that supply the kitchen so what we're going to do is we're going to switch we're going to prove the electricity is off tails from the meter are coming in here going through the 100 amp double pole switch coming out and supplying the rest of the circuits it split five circuit breakers on the 80 amp RCD and the other five are on the 63 amp so what we're going to do now is we're going to check that the electricity is there we're going to prove that our test gear works and then we're going to switch the electricity off before we take this circuit breaker out hi there we've now drilled out we've drilled out the rivets so that we can take the miniature circuit breaker apart so it's riveted together to make it mechanically robust so that you can't just pull it apart that easy because it has to have proper mechanical structure so that it's uh, electrically and mechanically intact so we've drilled these out so what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and we're going to see the main parts inside so we've got a thermal overload part of the miniature circuit breaker that takes care of currents that are above in this case it's a 16 amp breaker so currents that are significantly above 16 amps uh, for long periods of time as an overload currents it will eventually trip out after so many minutes that's defined by the the current time curve we can see we can still see the burn mark there so the suspicion is be the thermal overload part of the circuit breaker has gone faulty it's also got a magnetic short circuit overload that in case of a B type which this is will trip out between three and five times the normal operating current which is 16 amps as in detecting short circuit currents so it will trip out very quickly within a split second it will also have arc suppression in here so that when you do switch it off and it breaks any current flowing the arc is contained within the device and it doesn't uh, damage any components or any equipment so we're going to take it apart now so we'll take the top off and what we can see inside what we can see inside now what we've got is we've got a magnetic circuit you can see a coil there that is the short circuit protection and lo and behold what we can see here look at the thermal overload part which is essentially bimetallic strip we can see that it has burnt out so it has done the right thing in terms of tripping out but we can't reset it because the bimetallic strip has been burnt out here this feature here will be the arc suppression part of it so that the arc gets contained within a certain area of the miniature circuit breaker and doesn't damage any other components doesn't set fire to anything doesn't melt anything when you switch it off and you break any current that's flowing so that's quite interesting that we can actually see the bimetallic strip part of it burnt out so the suspicion is what's been happening is because this is a 16 amp radial in the in the kitchen if you have a dishwasher and a kettle on you could have 2 kilowatts plus 3 kilowatts at the same time 5 kilowatts flowing that's over 20 amps 22 amps that is an overload situation for this 16 amp breaker and if that's been happening over a number of years yes the kettle is only on for two or three minutes but over a number of years the thermal overload has got burnt out and the device is failed and to be fair to the device it did actually trip out and you just can't reset it so it's now faulty and 
we've replaced it with a new 16 amp breaker. Thank you for watching.